Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, traders. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're safe. I hope you're healthy. I hope you've got a big smile on your face, and I hope you're catching pips as usual. Pips of Persia here, back with a video that's a little bit long overdue, I know, but I'm here to strengthen your knowledge. Now, before we get started, I would like to thank each and every single one of you for your phenomenal support. I'm speechless to see that we are now over 30,000 people strong. I hope that you're elevating your trading game using the content here, and I cannot wait to grow our community further to help hundreds of thousands of more people grow and realize the truth about this industry. Now some time ago I asked on my telegram channel, link in the description by the way, if people believe in candlestick patterns and if they believe they really work and it was quite interesting to see everyone's response. So in this video today I want to dive deep into a few interesting things about candlestick patterns and in the next video which will be posted tomorrow we will compare proper supply and demand analysis with candlestick patterns patterns to give many of you another breakthrough, hopefully. For now, let's go ahead and jump straight into the video. I'm quite certain majority of you watching this video know exactly what candlestick patterns are, but just as a quick refresher, candlestick patterns are simply patterns that are there to tell you about potential continuation or reversals in the market. The same way you have the chart patterns, whether they be harmonics or pennant formations or flag formations, whatever it is that you're using, there are different candlestick patterns that you could potentially use to your advantage to know if the market is going to reverse or not. Now, this is something that has been used for a very long time. It's nothing new. A lot of you most definitely have used candlestick patterns in your journey as well. So the purpose of this video is not to go into what they actually are, but what they look like on different time frames. And I really want to dive deep to help you all understand that some of these behaviors are actually the same thing. I'm not going to be talking about every single pattern, but very quickly, I just want to talk about the behavior behind a few of them. Let's start off with the engulfing patterns. The bullish engulfing formation is obviously where you have a bearish candle followed by a bullish candle where the bullish candle has completely engulfed the previous body. And we know that if this takes place at the bottom of the range, it makes it likely for the market to potentially reverse and head up after that. And the idea behind it in terms of the behavior is obviously the sellers have been in power before then, pushing the price further and further and further down. Within this one candle, within this set period of time, clearly we've introduced a lot of demand into the market, hence pushing the sellers out of the way and clearing the space for the buyers to actually take control. Similar idea applies to the bearish engulfing candles as well if they form at the top of the range and if the bearish candle completely engulfs the bullish candle body as well. So let's say the market is continuously coming up and up and up and you're at the top of that range, you get a bearish engulfing candle, a candle that the body of it is completely engulfing the previous one. Naturally, we know that that makes it a little bit more likely for the market to start heading lower. And as you can imagine, the behavior behind this is the buyers have been in control, then clearly the sellers have managed to outpower those buyers, pushing them further down and maintaining the price below and therefore making it likely for the market to actually go ahead and reverse. Now following this you have the gravestone and dragonfly doji, they're quite easy to see, quite easy to spot as well. The gravestone doji gets formed at the top of the range like any doji candle, it doesn't really have a body so the open and the close price of that candle is more or less at the same place and you have an elongated wick to the upside. And what this normally shows is again buyers have been in control pushing the price higher. This long wick to the upside, it should be a significant wick to the upside, is now telling you that sellers have probably entered the market somewhere up there and probably the market could be reversing if it's at the top of the range. And for a dragonfly doji, it's quite literally the exact same thing, but instead it's at the bottom of the range. So you have an elongated wick to the downside, you've got the open and the close price roughly at the same level. Again, it's the same idea that the sellers now have been completely outpowered by buyers. You can see through the long wick to the downside at the bottom of the range, making it more likely for this to reverse and go higher. We've got hammer and shooting star formations as well, which are quite similar to gravestone and dragonfly formations as well. The hammer formation is similar to the dragonfly doji but instead it has a body so you can see a small body on that candle as well. The body for the hammer formation we normally like it to be a green body, a bullish candle but as long as the wick is significantly longer than the body you can go ahead and consider this a hammer formation at the bottom of the range potentially indicating reversals and the shooting star formation would also be the same at the top of the range where you get an elongated wick to the upside, you get a 
small body and you can see that the wick in one direction is significantly bigger than the body. In these cases, you don't necessarily want to see a wick to the downside over here. We've also got tweezer tops or tweezer bottoms as well, which kind of look like this. You've got a bearish candle coming down and a bullish candle straight after that, but the bodies or the wicks of these candles look to be around the same level, as if you've printed the same candle as before, but in the different direction. So similar enough to a bullish engulfing candle, but in this case, obviously the bodies are going to be on the same level, and so will the wicks as well. Now, if tweezer bottoms like this happen at the bottom of the range, as you can imagine, it will be a bullish reversal formation, and if they happen at the top of the range, where you have the bearish candle, that's coming now after that bullish candle, again, not necessarily engulfing, but now they're on the same level. They literally look like tweezer tops or tweezer bottoms, as you can see. Again, this could indicate a reversal to the downside if it's formed at the top of the range as well. Now, towards the start of my trading journey, especially the days that we were trading with normal retail concepts such as support resistance, trend line, all of these different things, I was actually a very heavy believer in candlestick patterns. I really, really, really utilize them for every single trade. And quite literally, even if you look at some of the old videos in this channel, you'll see that I even speak about them. But as you start to learn a little bit more about how the markets actually move, you'll start to understand that it's not about patterns. It's about the behavior that gets formed and it's down to us to be able to spot, understand and trade that behavior. Now it's time to answer the important question. Could all of these patterns actually be the same thing? The answer is yes. Indeed, all of these patterns are the exact same formation. It's the exact same market behavior repeating itself. As we said before, the bearish engulfing at the top of the range. You've got a candle that's completely engulfed the previous candle, showing the sellers are in control, pushing it further down. That's the exact same behavior as a shooting star formation, the exact same behavior as a tweezer top formation, and the exact same behavior as a gravestone doji. Similarly, the bullish engulfing candle has the exact same behavior as a hammer formation, which has the exact same behavior as a tweezer bottom formation and has the exact same behavior as a dragonfly doji. But behavior to one side, even these candlestick pattern can actually look like each other on different time frames. For example, looking at the bearish engulfing formation, you can see this includes the market going up and coming back down and maintaining the price below. So if it looks like a bearish engulfing candle, let's say on the one minute time frame, imagine if you mix these two candles together on the two minute time frame, you can actually be looking at a shooting star formation simply because within that two minute time frame, the exact same thing has happened. The market has come up, come all the way back down and maintain the price below. It's the exact same thing over here for tweezer tops and the gravestone doji as well. Tweezer top formation, you have the market going up and then coming back down. Same movement to the upside and back down. Let's say if that looks like this on the one minute time frame, on another time frame, on a two minute time frame, it could potentially look like a gravestone doji because it's the same thing. The market has gone up within that time frame, it's come back down and maintained the price at the same level that it started at. But why should we even care? Why does this even matter for our analysis? Because I said all of that to help you understand that things can look different on different time frames, but the behavior can be identical on different time frames. But as long as you learn the behavior properly, you will be able to trade it properly whether or not you're looking at the right time frame. Now that we know all of these different candlestick formations can look like each other, let's start to apply it a little bit more to our style of analysis. What about institutional candles? It's important to understand that institutional candles, indeed similar to these candlestick formations, can look very different on different time frames. This in itself can actually look like a perfect institutional candle and after a decline, perhaps you're expecting some type of a mitigation to trade this to the downside. But chances are, on another time frame, it looks like this. Or maybe you are looking at the market declining, reaching the bottom, and then you get a strong candle pushing down and then follow through after that, the market simply reverses and goes up. Perhaps you're waiting for this to come back down and mitigate it so you can trade this higher. Again, this is going to look like a dragonfly doji on a different time frame. I say all of this to help you understand that you need to stop looking at patterns. You need to stop trying to trade based on patterns. You need to stop trying to trade based on all of these random patterns indeed. That actually comes, not just candlestick patterns, but any chart patterns, any market formations, any of these. You need to stop using them because that's not how the market moves. You need to start to understand the exact behavior that takes place 
case. So whether it looks like a strong body institutional candle or maybe just a random wick, you will understand that that indeed is the area that you should take the trade based on. This video is setting the foundation for the video that I'm going to be releasing tomorrow because in that video, that's where I'm going to dive deep into the other formations that I haven't mentioned in this video and how they actually relate to supply and demand, how you can actually spot your institutional candles within them and also how to not confuse yourself with them. But with that being said, if you got value from this video, don't forget to press the like button down below and make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below as well. But the video tomorrow is going to be for the more advanced people, especially those who have looked into supply and demand as well. And if you haven't looked into supply and demand, hopefully the video tomorrow is going to paint a clear picture as to how you can start to implement it to your own charts. So with that being said, let's put in the hours, hundreds of hours back testing, practicing, analyzing charts, and let's work on the craft. Let's elevate and let's catch some pips.